Good morning and welcome back to Cherry Blossom Springs where today we are going to follow Melissa Stefanov into uh, the elementary school where she works as an elementary school teacher. Of course she uh, shares her home with her sister which um, she has a horrible relationship with. So we are just going to leave Jessica at home today and um, they have a good schedule of uh, avoiding each other. <laughs> so Melissa works during the day, Jessica works nights in her uh, gambling den. So they, don't have, don't, they won't have to see too much of each other. Now I'm starting this day off really really early because we still have some preparations to do for her first day on the job and she also has to set up a daycare center for the toddlers. So let's get moving and see what we're going to do at the elementary school. So here we are at the elementary school and Melissa is a little bit early so she can do some work before school starts, before class starts because class starts at 8 and we are early because I wanted to show you the daycare part of this school. Now since it's a really really small town we don't have a separate daycare center and a separate elementary school. And at this moment, we actually do not even have any children. We have two toddlers in town and we have two teenagers in town. And that is what we are going to use to show how this elementary school is going to look like in the future. So Therese is going to run the daycare center and she is going to be here until one o'clock. And in the meantime, Melissa is going to teach a class. now. Of course in elementary school there will be children in the future but for now um, we are going to give one class to both of the teenagers in town because also I want them to be in class together for once because they haven't met yet and I want them to meet each other. Um, let's do a potty training for Adam in the meantime because I want them to actually learn skills at this daycare center. <laughs> now come on, <laughs> could you stop playing with your blocks? Thank you. <laughs> Potty train Adam. Okay. So since it is almost 8 o'clock we are going to uh, skip to the school part, the class part. Lisa is going to, to stop working and we are going to summon the teenagers. These school box have a high attraction to, uh, to Sims so we have to time this a little bit and um, to be honest I just want to see these two talking to each other. Ooh, he's already talking about making out. <laughs> so let's check out their attraction. Oh, he, he doesn't have... Oh no, he doesn't have... Oh no. <laughs> what about her? What is she attracted to? So she likes... Fat people and pet lovers. Well, we don't know if he's a pet lover. Oh, that's too bad. Because he, he is attracted to blonde sims who have a really high creative skill. And Lizzie is a blonde. And she has pretty high creative skill. I don't know at what point this starts to count. But anyway, back to class. So as I was saying, 
I really wanted to try playing the schools the way that uh, one of my new favorite YouTubers uh, described. She, uh, her name is Annie Betts or Bats, Betts, Bats, I don't know. <laughs> uh, she um, makes amazing video about videos about The Sims 2 and I haven't been able to stop watching her uh, lately. Um, she has a video where she explains how, this, how she plays the, the high schools and she explains it way better than me so if you uh, don't know her already please go check out her channel watch her video I will link it below she has this system uh, where she uses the where she uses the opportunity pack reading desk uh, in combination with the uh, slowing time clock which is around the corner right here currently set to 50% so this slows time um, of course you need the sim blender to teleport the sims here and for the daycare center you actually move in the toddlers so you can uh, interact with them but for the teenagers they don't have to move in they just uh, teleport here and you make them selectable and every other sim is going to be cleared off the lot so only the selectable sims that are actually attending school or teaching school classes are on the lot. Now of course the way I'm playing these rotations in this neighborhood is with uh, community time. So time also passes when sims are on a community lot like a school. Uh, today for example Melissa will go home around 5 in the afternoon. And when she comes home it will actually be 5 in the afternoon and she will have missed her work day. So you can of course not do that too many times because she will get fired and that is why in the future I'm going to do this differently by um, letting some other sim own the school and then of course uh, teleporting Melissa in to teach there so she can actually go to her work when we play her, uh, her household. So this is actually just for one or two days this week. In the start, when we don't have that many sims yet, we have only 24, I still wanted to play the schools a little bit so Ricky and Lizzie can at least meet and can have uh, a day in school together. And I've started building a high school. Actually, after watching Annie Betts' video, I think I spent the entire night, <laughs> I stayed up and uh, spent the entire night building a high school. I was so excited. To, uh, to start playing that so it is ready but of course there are only two sims now and we are going to do that later maybe a few rounds uh, when we are a few rounds further and for now this is just going to be a one or two day thing in the first rounds i am going to let melissa go to the school uh, maybe once or twice to uh, progress the school days and her skilling uh, and of course she will have to miss work for that but not every day. The other interesting thing is that Melissa, the one teaching the class, is not necessarily the best teacher in town. She got this job from the mayor because of course when she moved out of Simsville, she just graduated, she just wanted to get away because of the big fight with her sister. Of course she didn't know Jessica was making the exact same plans, wanted to get away and they both didn't know that they would end up in the same house together. So she didn't really make any plans, she just wanted to get out. She didn't think about a job, she didn't have any obligations at home. So besides from moving farther away from her parents, who she's really close to, um, there wasn't really much to consider. She just packed her bags and went away. Her mother, by the way, is um, Ivy Kapoor, uh, one of the, home, the base game townies a teenager actually when you start out with the sims uh, 2 and her father is just one of my own created sims not one of the original family but families but uh, she falls in with the fourth generation age-wise she was always a very popular girl not necessarily the nicest girl uh, she was quite the bully in uh, in high school and in her younger years Jessica was actually even worse, so out of the two of them, Melissa was always kind of the nice one. And even though she was kind of a bully, everyone still wanted to be her friend, but she didn't have that many close friends. It was mainly her sister. 
Uh, and this is also the time when she hung out with Daniel and Jonathan, who you can see here. Daniel is wearing the red shirt with the guitar on it, and his brother Jonathan is dancing with uh, her sister Jessica. He has the sunglasses on. Now the thing that connected them was their love for music. Of course, the guys uh, play musical instruments and Jessica and Melissa did ballet, but that is what connected them. And here you can see their that uh, she had her first kiss with Daniel. So they do have a very long history together. <laughs> of course, they didn't fall in love again in college. He uh, ended up uh, going a different way and so did she. Of course, this all ended with uh, Melissa and Jessica woohooing with the same guy without them knowing about it and ending up in the fight. And that is how she ended up here. <laughs> And when she came here, the mayor had a few openings and one of those was becoming a teacher. So she thought, why not? I have to do something. And uh, that's how she became a teacher. Now if this is something that is going to last, we will have to see. She is a romance sim and she probably has some different ones than studying skills. But who knows? She might even be successful. Now let's move over to Ricky and Lizzie, the two teenagers that are attending the school today. They both have been through a lot really. Lizzie of course just lost her father and because of that hasn't been able to concentrate at school. So her grades really really dropped and uh, Ricky of course is a troubled teenager at the moment because his uh, parents recently got divorced and uh, he and his father moved to Cherry Blossom Springs and he hasn't seen his mother in quite a while. His mother also moved to a different uh, house. She moved closer to her work. She moved to the city. So his childhood home isn't there anymore. So that's also something he cannot go back to. And that leaves him with his father feeling alone and just with a built up anger inside that he doesn't know uh, how to deal with that. But for now the first day of school is over so we are going to send the teenagers home by making them unselectable. Their uh, relationship actually went up quite a bit. Ricky's is 24 and I think Lizzie's <laughs> from Lizzie's side it was like 43 or something. So even though they are not attracted to, to each other they, they do get along. And we are also going to send Therese home because her shift is over and making them unselectable will make them uh, be banned from this uh, from this lot and of course Melissa is going to take over the daycare center for, for now. She is going to take care of the toddlers until 5 o'clock in the uh, afternoon and that is when she will go home and uh, the two the, the toddlers <laughs> will move with her so when Therese gets home she will have the home to herself and will be able to go to work and we will take it up from there so as you can see Therese just got home from uh, from work her uh, work time is from 1 to, uh, to 5 and uh, the location where she works is at the town hall. So a few episodes further we are going to play the town hall and we are going to see Therese again. But for now she has uh, returned home. She is a pleasure sim so she decides to watch on TV but we are also going to teleport back the children. And of course, they are at this moment at the Stefanov household. Did I miss it? Yes, there it is, Eva. And we are of course going to move back in Adam and Eva. So now the children have returned from daycare and she can continue teaching them their uh, toddler skills. So that she's going to turn off the TV <laughs> and start teaching Adam to walk. Now as you can see the furniture in this orphanage is pretty much non-existent and I did that on purpose because I want it to be a challenge to actually run this orphanage. So the way that it's going to work is 
next to the very small income that Therese makes from her job as a social service worker, the orphanage is going to get a weekly payment, like a stipend of sorts, to take care of these children. So with that uh, weekly payment, she has to buy furniture and food for the children and some toys and educational things. So that is why for now at the start it's really really empty, but it's going to look better in the future. As for the children, we do not really know where they came from. They are in the orphanage, they do not have a family. And one of the future couples in Cherry Blossom Springs will adopt them. This could be one of the couples, that, uh, the same sex couples, or maybe uh, one of the couples that did not succeed in having children of their own. We uh, will have to see how that is uh, going to go. And then Therese, good old Therese. Now she is a pleasure sim, but I think that deep down she really wants a family of her own. She has always chosen the more easy path in life and not really committing to anything. And now that she is getting older, she is 36 years old. She realizes that she is taking care of a lot of people, but she doesn't really have anything of her own. So that might make her uh, make different choices in the future. And I think it would be really nice to see her start her own family in the future. But for now, she only has some pleasure wants. Uh, she did have a kind of a fling with uh, Kate Sanders at the meet and greet. Now, I don't know if that's something that she's going to pursue, we'll have to see. Uh, she does have a want to, uh, to go on a date, and she has two bolts with uh, Christoph, the local contractor. Uh, she is, of course, bisexual, and she is going to have her hands full on this orphanage, taking care of two toddlers all on her own with very, very low funds is, uh, is going to be a challenge. So that is how she is going to spend the first few days in this neighborhood. And we will probably not watch every single bit of that because it will just be a repetition of what we've seen today. Her getting up, going to work, taking care of the toddlers, maybe even go on a date. And if she does, I will definitely share that with you. <laughs> But if she doesn't, we will see her at the fall festival on Saturday at the end of the week and on the last day of this fall season. So instead, let's go and take a look at Melissa. Uh, not well, she's on the toilet. But uh, <laughs> let's go and see how her, what her evening is going to look like. She um, has some needs that she has to take care of and there is not much in the fun category that she uh, can do. Her hobby is weightlifting, uh, but she doesn't have any appliances uh, or training equipment at home. Of course, uh, I really want to play this neighborhood in that way, uh, so that they have to go to a community lot to, uh, to do their hobby. Uh, but there's really not much fun to be had at home uh, alone by herself. She does want to become friends with uh, Natasha, so I think she is just just going to take a shower, then get some leftovers, wow. have some dinner, and then uh, call Natasha. So that's probably what she is going to do. But of course, we are going to see her in the um, in the episodes where we are going to play the community lots that are built for uh, for social interactions. So we might see her pop up at the bar later when we play uh, that part of the neighborhood. So this is the third night that Melissa is home alone. Completely bored, out of her mind going crazy. <laughs> and I think she is going to um, to cave and just uh, ask someone out on a date, anyone. And um, she, uh, the first choice is not going to be to call her uh, her ex-boyfriend from her childhood. Uh, maybe for all time's sake, but uh, I don't think that will be her first choice. So <laughs> she met Rick Valentine at the meet and greet, and I think she is going to call him. And uh, see what he says. Oh, 
And he says yes. <laughs> so she has a date. She immediately <laughs> rolls for the fear to marry Rick. Well, <laughs> I don't think that that is going to be uh, <laughs> something that's going to happen. So let's just see what these sims do. Uh, let's have them have a little chat. Oh, they did that on their own. Okay, so let's leave them to it and see what they are going to do on their own. I'm not going to influence this date in any way. Um, so if she wants to have fun. <laughs> She's going to have to find a way. She's mainly thinking about uh, Robin and the fight she had with her, but I don't know what happened. I uh, I haven't been able to find <laughs> to find out when or why they had a fight. This date just turned into a booty call, didn't it? No, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay, what are you guys gonna do? <laughs> they are actually going to sit on the couch and talk. Well, Sure, why not? <laughs> Time is running out though, so uh, she has less than an hour to make this into uh, a better date. Rick is the local gardener, by the way, who the other sims can hire to, uh, to attend to uh, their gardens. Uh, and uh, they are both romance sims, so I guess they kind of fit together and, uh, and Melissa has the lifetime wish to woohoo with 20 sims um, but still I don't feel comfortable to meddle in their uh, dates especially without a backstory and we, we don't have one right now nothing <laughs> oh, she's just going, just going to the lounge on the couch a pillow fight, come on, he wants to do a pillow fight. I think that would be fun. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> at least that's something. <laughs> I've had better, yeah. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> so uh, let's um, no, let's just say goodbye and uh, go to bed because she has an early start in uh, in the morning. <laughs> Tomorrow we are going to follow her into the high school for one more day, and that is going to be the last day for these teenagers. Uh, maybe we'll send them to high school, but um, if not, we won't see the elementary school again until there are more children to, uh, to teach. 
Alright, so we are back at the elementary school for one more day of teaching in this round and Melissa is going to activate the epic and start telling the story and Ricky and Lizzie are going to uh, attend this class and I think their relationship has improved quite a bit um, Ricky still hasn't made his first friend but that could very well become uh, Lizzie um, after this day of school yeah. of course in the meantime Therese is uh, taking, care of <laughs> taking care of the toddlers and looking quite annoyed <laughs> Let's see, uh, let's greet Adam and teach him to talk. So attending this class should improve both Lizzie and uh, Ricky's grades. Let's see how that is going. She has a C- minus now, so that's good. She was at a D when we started. And Ricky is at a B, so that'll probably make his father proud. <laughs> It's 8 o'clock in the morning. We uh, started a little bit early. We'll probably go on until around 10 o'clock, take a short break, and then uh, maybe even do some creative stuff in the, uh, in the afternoon. wondering what to do with these toddlers. I want them to be adopted when they are still toddlers but uh, they will age up within this round and I don't think we have that many we'll have that many couples at the end of this round so I might do some age adjusting just for the toddlers and just once. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that um, in the rest of the game. But we're still setting up and it's all still in the first few days, so uh, I think we can do that now. But only if they're not adopted before they, uh, they age up. school is doing money wise so at the every Monday I think the town hall um, the mayor is going to the town hall and um, and pay all the fees in the in the town so the school is going to get the fee the orphanage is going to get a fee and from the top of my head there are two others <laughs> that I cannot think of right now but are <laughs> four services that are going to uh, get a payment from the town hall. One of them is the, uh, is the elementary school. And of course in the future the high school might get one too. Oh right, the community center is another one which is right behind here. Um, which is meant for social uh, interactions of course. Um, the school is of course meant for education and that's why they are getting a fee from the, uh, from the town hall. And I think we are going to have to do some investments in some, um, well, an inside place to have lunch would be nice, really. <laughs> so that's one. And uh, maybe a few computers or a second, um, what do you call that, an easel, like for painting. That would be nice. Um, yeah, so it's around 10 o'clock. Uh, Ricky is apparently getting bored and walking off. Um, so let's 
stop the class and uh, have a little lunch break. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Ricky was going to read to one of the toddlers. <laughs> he is much sweeter than he looks, I think. <laughs> and Adam just uh, learned how to how to talk. I think he needs some pot training. We're definitely going to take care of the toddlers in a minute. Let's just skip to Ricky and Lizzie. So, they seem to be talking about space travel and maybe even ways of escaping this place. So let's continue to the afternoon part of. Uh, oh, what are they doing? <laughs> well, if they're not going to get into a relationship, they're probably going to be <laughs> really good friends. So they're the only um, other sim in town around the same age. So that's gotta mean that they are going to form a bond, right? So let's skip to the afternoon class. So sorry to disrupt this. This has always been like one of my favorite interactions. The peekaboo with the toddlers. That's <laughs> just the cutest. <laughs> so apparently Melissa is starting to look more and more like a teacher. <laughs> Walking around with a book. <laughs> so she's going to attend class. Ricky's going to attend class. There we go. And I think they are around halfway on their uh, creativity skill. And Melissa is actually gaining skills too, so teaching at the high school might not be that far away. <laughs> So I think we've come to the end of this episode. Uh, we've seen the first setup for the school system, the orphanage, and the start of the next generation sims with the toddlers and the teens. Uh, so um, what do you think about Ricky and Lizzie? Who, what should happen to them? Will they become best friends? Is it a starting romance? <laughs> Let me know, share your thoughts, I'm really curious. And uh, leave a note in the comments, who do you think Melissa should go on her next date with? And Therese? Who does she belong with? Let me know, what do you think? Who do you want them to, uh, to date? So don't forget to go and check out Annie Bats. Her videos are really, really good and deserve more views. And if you love storytelling, you're gonna love her. And on next episode, we're going to organize the first house parties in town at the Hobson household and at the Banker's household. So if you're curious about what's going to happen there, be sure to subscribe, click the bell, uh, leave a like if you enjoyed watching this video and want to see more. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.